All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am back and let's get this thing set up. All right, so we need to refuel. Did I ever cut the engines? Yes, engines are cut. All right, so we need to load. What are we looking for? 6.8. And then our loading is 131 passengers. And we should have a zero fuel weight of 56.0. All right, so battery one and two is on. Recorder ground control is already on. External power is unnecessary because we're running on APU. Fuel pumps are all on still because we do need them. Fuel is loaded. APU fire test is not needed. It's already running. APU master switch is already on. APU start is already on. Cockpit lights and McDo is set up. Uh, flap lever is zero. Ground spoilers are retracted. Uh, Probe and window heat is not needed. APU bleed is on. Air conditioning control panel is no white. Um, generator one and two fault light are on. External power is off. Uh, electronal, electrical panel is all off. Ventilation panel is all off. Uh, Adir's is on. Strobe lights on. Net wing, nav and logo. Seat belts are off, but I'm going to turn them on now. Get all the passengers seated. Landing elevation is auto. Pack flow as required is normal. Uh, fuel pumps are all on. Engine one and two fire test. All right, let's go ahead and run that Dream Raiders fight real quick. Go away. All right, looks like we've got quite a few people actually participating this time. And we had a victory very, very quickly. It looks like Pendorf Gaming and Shoehorn won uh, some scrolls. And then let's see. I want to put on. Let's let's put on a pumpkin mate. All right, and transition back. All right, so fuel pumps are all on. Engine one and two fire test is complete. Radios are all on. Mcdo needs to be configured. So our data should already be good, but in it we are going from NPR to. Where are we going again? EGPD. Flight number let's throw something in there uh cost index today is gonna be 10. cruise flight level is gonna be 380. grab that wind flight plan we are departing in br via runway 17 on the Ipotu to Charlie. With no transition. Then from Ipotu, we're getting on an airway Zulu 107. And going to Barrett. Then via Uniform Zulu 107 to Alpha Delta November. And then we're going to EGPD Arrival. Let's 
go ILS 16, or do we have, uh, we do not have an RNAV, so we're gonna go ILS 16. No stars available, so we will do no stars. And no transition. All right, let's take a look at this and see where we'll have to vector ourselves, because we'll definitely have to vector ourselves. Oh dear. Honestly, it's probably better if we remove that and go straight there. All right, looks good. So let's go to init B. Grab our plugin again. And our zero fuel weight is going to be 56.0. And our center of gravity is 29.6. Block fuel is going to be 6.8 tons. Looks like we've got about two and a half hours of extra fuel. Performance, we're going to be taking off via flaps one. So we need V1 is 140. V rotate is 140. V2 is 142. Flaps are going to be two slash down, or no, one slash down. 0.1. Flex temp is gonna be 65. You know, I'll bet that first flight I put in flaps too, didn't I? Um, okay, performance, we are going to EGPD. And then database. What? EGPD is not in your database? What? EG, D. Now what I put? Not in database, okay, well. All right, then. Let's just hope we can do this. All right. Um, push back and start. Altimeter should still be set. Flight directors are both on. We can turn off our landing systems. Good for a while. Um... Speed should be dashed, heading should be dashed. We're gonna set this to 380. Fly across the channel today. Uh, actually, we're not going over the channel, but. Uh, okay, speed, heading, altitude, uh, anti-skid and nose wheel steering is on. Switching panel is all normal. Bacon can come on. All right, let me look at the live map so I can make sure this time that I tail the correct direction when I push back. <laughs> oh, that was embarrassing. Okay, so we are taking off via 17. Correct? Just want to make sure. Yes, 17. All right, so I need to tail right. Or push back, pre-plan. Ironically, we are taking off via runway 27 from stand 27. Round a cockpit, plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you are ready. All right, and we are in fact ready to go ahead and start that pushback. Toe is driving up. As soon as they give me the clear, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the igniters. AP Bleed is on this time. I messed that up the first flight. 
Cyber Sheep's Dream. That's what makes you wonder if uh, robots dream. I thought I would have thought it was. Um, uh, oh, what was that movie? Two thousand one, A Space okay. Odyssey. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed. Ready to connect. Oh. <sighs> One thing I would like is to replace these rudder pedals with something a little more substantial. These ones are all plastic. And while they are high quality plastic, they're not bad. Pin inserted. Release parking brake. Parking brake released, sir. Starting pushback, and you may start engines. Alright, igniters on, starting engine two. And they are taking us through the jetway. Thanks, better push back. Um, not at all what you're supposed to be doing. What 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 are you what are you doing, better push back? What the hell are you doing? The just so y'all know, this would be a pushback cart that just got fired. He just lost his job. <laughs> I think maybe he expected me to be in a different orientation or something. I don't know, but he decided that he wanted to kill everybody on this plane. And he's still kind of going a little wonky. All right, that's engine two started. Let's start engine one. Thank God collision is not on. Otherwise, this pushback cart would have just killed us. All right. Well, let's try not to die anymore today. I've reached my maximum number of deaths I'm willing to attribute to the game. Now we're back on track. We look fine now. All right, and it looks like everything is on and available. Positive start engine one. We're gonna go back to normal. APU bleed can come off. Ground spoilers can be armed. Flaps are set for takeoff. And the pitch trim, which is gonna be uh, down point one. All right, so we, we are at one up. We need to be at one down. Nah, nah. One down. Perfect. All right, engine wing anti-ice is not needed. APU master can come off. All right, we're going to taxi via Whiskey, Alpha 5, Yankee, Alpha 1. One seven. Operation complete. Set parking brake. Parking brake set, sir. Disconnecting tow. Stand by. By the way, if y'all want to hear something funny, turn that on. About to yell at me. I think he's gonna yell at me. He yell at me for blinding him. Normally he does. Maybe it's too far in the in the procedure for him to worry about that. Should be removing my uh, bar now. Toe is disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. 
Hand signal will be on the right. We'll see you next time and have a great flight. It'll be on the right. I'm not going to worry about the, the pin this time. On the right, it puts him right behind this so I can't see um, him hold up the pin, which is what I'm supposed to be waiting for. But I'm just not going to worry about it. I know he's clear. Uh, so parking brake can come off. Elapsed time. Run. All right, brakes should be good. Turn off our brake fan because they're nice and cool now. Uh, flight control check. Full left, full right, full up, full down. And then we're going to rudder. Full left, full right. Everything looks good. FMA should say nav and climb. Auto brake set max. Terrain on ND on. Call the purser. Ecam tests. No blue. All right, we're going to Alpha 5. Whiskey Alpha 5, Yankee Alpha 1. All right, transponder. Actually, I need to play the briefing again. Greetings from the cockpit. This is your captain speaking. Thank you for choosing to fly Iraq attack this evening. I'd like to take this opportunity to remind you of a few things. Our AV system isn't working today, so we can't show you the $2 million safety video that an ad agency did for us. But since very little of what that video tells you will actually save your lives, I'm going to do it instead. Here's the big thing to remember. If we crash or make an emergency landing, statistically speaking, 95% of you will survive. If it's a serious crash, 55% of you will survive. So if this plane is going down, concentrate. Because your life may depend on some smart decisions. Keep in mind that 80% of accidents happen within the first 3 minutes and the last 8 minutes of flight. So that's when it would be wise to keep your shoes on and put your laptops away and stay focused. The safest seats on this plane are over the wings closest to the emergency exits. If you're not in one of those right now, here's what you can do to help ensure your survival. Look where your nearest exit is. Now count the rows between you and that exit. If the cabin was full of smoke or upside down, or full of smoke and upside down, how would you get to that exit? Take a moment to visualize yourself doing that right now. Now look at your seatbelt. I know all of you know how to use it, but that's because nothing is making you lose your shit right now. It's common for people in emergency stress situations to try and open that thing by pressing a button that's not actually there, like the seatbelt on your car. So take a moment to imagine yourself lifting that flap in an emergency. In fact, do it right now just to get used to the motion. Emergency evacuations on the runway are more common than crashes. In the event of something like an engine fire, we need to get you all off the plane in about 90 seconds. This means you need to leave your fucking bags in the overhead bins and get off the damn plane in a quick and orderly manner. Those bags will bring the evacuation to a virtual halt. My first officer and I will be trying to get off this plane, and the last thing we want is to be cockpit blocked by your roll-on. Now, you're probably well aware there's a life jacket under your seat, but forget about it. They're less likely to save your life than those little airline pillows. Sure, there was a famous 2009 emergency water landing on the Hudson, but there were boats on hand immediately, and nobody actually needed the life vests. There was a flight that ditched in the Caribbean in 1970 where 40 lives were likely saved by the vests, but there was also one off the coast of Ethiopia in 1996 in which many passengers put them on too early and couldn't get out of the flooded fuselage. To put it another way, if we replaced those life vests with a box of chocolates, it wouldn't alter your survival odds. Let's take a second to talk about those oxygen masks. Here's the thing. If we lose cabin pressure at a fairly low altitude, no big deal. You can breathe just fine. 
If we lose cabin pressure at cruising altitude, you can't. If that happens, here's what I'm required to do by law. I'm going to push the nose of the plane into an emergency descent that's going to feel like a roller coaster drop and it's going to scare the crap out of you. But it's not dangerous. I practiced. Also by law, I need to notify air traffic control as well as the airline and I need to do all that before I can get on the microphone and tell you what the hell is going on. So don't be surprised if you don't hear from me for a bit. I'm just doing my job and you're going to be fine. For those of you who don't manage to get your masks on in time, you'll probably pass out and then wake up in a minute or two when I get the plane to a lower altitude. You want to know what the biggest danger is? The biggest danger is actually that your luggage or those duty-free bottles you purchased and put in the overhead compartment will fall out when you open it and hit someone on the head. There are actually several thousand reported injuries from this every year in the United States alone. By contrast, the FAA only reports 58 or so serious injuries from turbulence. So one could easily make the case that we should, we should be handing you a helmet and skip the seat belts. Another big risk is the drink cart. Seriously. It weighs over 100 kilos when fully loaded, and every year passengers get their elbows, knees, and feet broken when the drink cart slams into them. So keep your arms and legs tucked away. Why haven't airlines put some safety padding on the drink cart? I don't know. Maybe because you keep screaming at the attendants for your chicken being bland or your drink not being cold. Same goes for spilled proof coffee and teapots and cups with lids. Every year some poor passengers get hot coffee or tea in their crotch when there's a bit of turbulence, but until the airlines fix this, I'm afraid you're on your own. Now you're probably wondering how can this bucket of bolts stay in the sky if we can't get the AV system or the latch on your tray table to work properly. To be honest, we sometimes wonder that as well. But the stats speak for themselves. The actual risk of dying in a plane crash is 1 in 11 million, according to the Harvard School of Public Health 2006 study. So you're far more likely to be struck by lightning or killed by a shark. And it's certainly much safer than driving. Right after 9-11, many were scared to fly. 12 to 20% fewer people flew. But because more people made driving trips instead of flying, a German professor estimated that an extra 1,595 people died in car accidents in the year after 9-11, just in the U.S. Just a little reminder that we'll probably keep the seatbelt sign on for nearly the entire flight, because our flight crew doesn't want to be bothered in the galley, and they definitely don't like trying to squeeze by you in the aisles. That or I forgot. Either way. Anyway, please sit back and relax while we take forever to serve you a drink and a barely editable meal, and then leave the tray on your table, making it nearly impossible for you to squeeze out of your chair and into the toilet. Looking forward to flying the salty skies with you again. All right, welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much for uh, bearing with me going through that. Yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, I've watched some of my old clips. I cannot believe the audio quality was that bad. And it really was. Like, if if you've seen any of my really old stuff... Um, oh my god, I had a terrible microphone. Um, it was it was truly, truly atrocious. Uh, so we are on climb out now. We had a six minute taxi. Yet it was still that bad even now. For me... Alright, speed check. Flaps clean. I don't think my flight's that... Or my uh, my audio's that bad. It's it's not good. Like, I don't have a proper XLR microphone or anything like that. But um, I do have myself a uh, Yeti... Uh, a Blue Yeti. Stream, Streamcaster, I think, is the version that I got. Alright, so... Everything looks good. Where are we at as far as... What's our... Mission altitude? 7,000 feet. I do like Europe's uh, flights a little better in that there's... it the, the, the things you need to do are more spaced out, right? In American flights, you have nothing to do between 400 feet and, like... Um, 400 and 10,000 and then 10,000 and 18,000. That's it. That's all you've got. 
Here, I've got 400 I turn on the air, the, the autopilot. 7,000 I switch to standard altimeter. 10,000 I can release the passengers and uh, turn on, turn off my uh, landing lights. Um, and then I really have nothing after that. Uh, whereas in the United States, it's 400, you turn on the autopilot, uh, 10,000, you can release the passengers, turn off the landing lights, and then 18,000, you switch standard barrow. Uh, but yeah, my audio is fine, uh, yours is the one that still sucks right now. Well, I mean, that's a question of, of, of hardware, right? Like, like I said, I'm using a Blue Yeti uh, uh, streamer, uh, streamcaster. Um, it's a $140 microphone, right? Um, then on top of that, I, I, I do know a little bit of audio engineering, so I do have, uh, like my noise gate set so that you don't hear my fan going and, uh, every little sound that goes on. It's also cardio in cardioid mode so that it's only taking what's coming from me. Although that might be silly given the fact that, you know, like I'm sitting in the corner of my room, so there's not a lot of sound coming from behind. But, um... It would be nice to have something a little more high quality than what I've got. Um, preferably something that has... Uh, I don't know how to describe it. But w one thing that I need is a preamp um, to adjust things. I, I mean, I need a lot of hardware. Um, I think probably before I worry about my audio, though, uh, my next purchase is going to have to be a stream deck. Unfortunately, um, they're just really expensive, uh, stream decks. Even the tiny ones are like, you know, two, three hundred dollars. And I think, I think part of the reason is because the buttons are little OLED screens, and that's really not necessary. I like. I wish they would make a budget version where it's just simpler, right? Like, just give me push buttons. I can remember what the buttons do, or I can go really, really OG Jerry rigged bullshit and put masking tape on it with a label. Remember the last time I went to your stream? That was the best your mic quality ever got. Yeah, yeah. Um, which wasn't bad. It, like, you've got to remember where you're at in your streaming career, right? Like, like I said, I prefer to be prepared to be ahead of where I'm at, right? So, like, yeah, there, 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 there needs to be cheaper options for stream decks. But as far as, like, audio hardware, I don't need this microphone. I have this microphone because if I get to the point of being bigger, I don't want to have to rush to get this microphone. Because I need to suddenly be higher quality because I've got, you know, 10, 15 people watching at a time instead of two or three. Um, I don't want to have to rush out and buy a new webcam because, you know, I've got 20, 30 people watching. I don't want to have to... Um, you know, I don't want to have to go and make new visual assets because I've gotten more people watching. I want to be able to have those things ready beforehand and I'm already using them so that when those people show up, I'm already looking good. I have like a 5% chance of blowing up. What are you using that's going to blow up? I mean, I have a friend of mine that used to stream... And I swear, this is no joke. She had a daisy chain of, like, ten different converter pucks to get her... Was it was it the webcam or the microphone? I think it might have been the microphone. So it had to, like, switch in between a bunch of different kinds of connections to get to one that her computer would accept. And I was like, no, you're definitely going to cause a fire in your house that way. Like, you're going to die. 
When I say blow up, I mean get more uh, get more viewers or get more popular. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'd say I have like a like a one percent chance. I I don't think it's going to happen, and I'm okay with that. Um, I don't care. If I don't ever get big, that's that's fine by me. Um, honestly, less pressure. You know, less people that give a shit about what I'm doing, the, the less I have to give a shit about what I'm doing. I can just do what makes me happy. Right? And that's the point. I want you guys to be... I, I want you guys to see me actually being happy. Yeah. Yeah, we are just small streamers. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like... I've made a little bit of money from from Twitch, but I, like that's not the point. Um, that's not the point. I, I I'm not here for the money. I'm here to spread how I feel about these things. Like I I want more people to see how accessible Flight Simulation is. I want more people to see me playing older classic style games and see that there is still a demand for it. To be able to see what quality games were like. Because, like, think about it, right? You're a Mega Man fan. Would you have played any any Mega Man style games if your first game into the genre was Mighty Number no. 9? Because I sure as shit wouldn't. Would I have played, you know... Any Metroidvania games, if my first game was Metroid Other M? No. I wouldn't have. Because that was a bad game. I think it was Other M that was bad. It was one of those 3D conversions that were bad, but... <laughs> my entire stream catalog is just uh, Mega Man and some random other game. Yeah. Um... I've done a lot of other games uh, because my style, right, is flight sim and retro games. Not necessarily just Mega Man, but retro and retro style games. So, like, I've played CrossCode because it's got a very old school feel. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Um, I've played um, I played the hardest Mega Man game, and now I'm a giant fan of the series. The hardest one. Which one is the hardest one? Like, Mega Man 1 was pretty damn rough. <laughs> Especially the, the uh, what do they call Zenkai platforms? The ones that, that show up for a, for a few seconds. Alright, looks like we've got a Dream Raiders to do. Flip that over. Fuck off. Alright, looks like we've got a few more people this time. Looks like we're taking a lot of damage, but we're gonna be fine. Yeah, especially now that, that boss is down. What was the first one you ever played? Mega Man 1? Transfer back. Oh, Mega Man Zero Four. Well, I'm gonna find out about that one eventually. <laughs> that is, if I can ever beat Mega Man X Six, uh, which is not a given. That's definitely a question. If I can beat Mega Man X Six, question mark. We've actually followed this this uh, flight plan really, really closely. <laughs> I 
All right, so when we get to Aberdeen, we're going to want to try and exit. Of course, it's not going to tell me what that taxiway is. Mike, maybe? Well, that's Mike. The fuck are you? The farthest I ever got into X6 was to the Hymax fight, and that fight made me quit. And I'm hoping I can make it through it. I don't want to give up, but... And I can't promise anything. Um, because ultimately, I don't want to make bad content, right? Like, I'm, I'm making content not just for Twitch, but also for YouTube, right? And if I'm just sitting here screaming at the game because I'm miserable, you know, that's, that's not going to be fun for anybody. Like here, if something goes wrong, I'm sitting here, plane, plane, what are we doing? What are we doing? Let's try not to die like that. That could be fun, right? But when I'm just sitting there screaming because it's not doing what I tell it to do, or because I can't figure out what the hell I'm supposed to be doing, then that's just not fun for anybody. That's just, nobody, nobody's having a good day. If that's what we're doing. Least of all me. God damn, we've got, we've got about 60 nautical miles. Just do nothing. Okay, uh, I do want to make sure I monitor everything. At least a little bit. Yeah, um, I'll be honest, in, what was that, X5? The Shadow Devil almost made me quit. That almost made me quit. I, I was so beyond done with that fight. I want to speed run a Mega Man game one day. So, I've kind of tried to a little bit. Um, but that's just not my style. Like, I would be glad to, once I get there, to try and, 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 and speed run, but, like, uh, so, part of my problem with speed running in Mega Man games is that I don't remember who's weak to what. I don't, I, I do not know weaknesses, unless they make sense. Um, I think I saw you struggle with it, yeah. But everybody struggles with it. But that's the problem, right? You, it, It's not like uh, picking zero or picking X or whatever it is. It's not like picking one of them makes you not have to fight the Shadow Devil or makes it any easier. You have to fight it no matter what. And it just it, it made me want to uninstall. Uh, and... And X6 is just, it's its having that kind of feeling. Like, it's not fun. It's not fair. Right? At least with the Yellow Devil in... Which Mega Man was... I, I don't remember which Mega Man the Yellow Devil was in. But, um... But, the Yellow Devil, at least, its pattern was the same every time. So once you figured out how to dodge the pattern, you just dodge the pattern. Right? No big deal. Even if it hadn't been, it, it took up an enormous amount of space. So you could physically position yourself where it was... Yeah, so that was in Mega Man 1. So you could physically position yourself in such a way that you can um, avoid everything as easily as possible. Right? And that's not that bad. It's not that big a deal. Um... There's plenty of space to see what's coming. It moves plenty slowly. You position yourself. You make the right jump. You ignore the rest. And you're safe. With the Shadow Devil, it's different every time, so you can't anticipate it. It's a very small space. The, the, the two places that it moves between are very close together. Um... About the only benefit that you get from it is that you don't have to... There, there's not two of them. That's the only benefit, is that you don't have two of them, they're not crossing. Now, there is one point where he puts half of his body in each place, and then he swaps them. 
and then he finishes tra teleporting. But generally speaking, you only have stuff coming from one direction, but that's the only benefit you get. At no point otherwise do you get a benefit. Even like the 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 the, the damage locations, you can hit them anywhere, I think, on the yellow devil, but on the shadow devil? Nah. You you gotta hit a specific spot, he's gonna open up his eye, you gotta hit that specific spot, and if you don't, you're toast. I don't like that. Um I mean, don't get me wrong, I kind of like that by itself, but partnered with the fact that it has very little space to move, and it moves very quickly, and you have very little safe places to stand, it's just, it's not fun. It, it, it becomes unfair. Jaron Joransky just placed an epic nightmare rogue. Thank you so much, my dude. I mean, we're still on the first map, so it's not likely to be needed. But, uh, needed or not, it's fucking appreciated. Unfortunately, there's not a special event going on right now. Otherwise, I would sign up for that. But, uh... It looks like we should be past our top of climb, and we are definitely not yet. We're still about uh, 2,000 feet short. So, uh, Sim Toolkit is giving us a little, uh, uh, they're, they're, they're puffing us up a little bit. Oh. They're about 60 nautical miles from our top of descent. But yeah, um, comparing Yellow Boy to, to, to Black Boy, uh, I gotta be honest, I prefer Yellow Boy. Uh, I feel like that was better game design. Um, I feel like... I feel like Black Boy was just at the point where they were trying to figure out something to do. They didn't know quite what they wanted to do with it. I hate it when a giant missile destroys my plane. I really hope that doesn't happen here. Uh, and it shouldn't, because there is no combat in this game. Um, now, that would be an interesting integration to have with, like, DCS World. Where somebody can jump in an, AC, in an A-10 Warthog and actually intercept you. He's gonna shoot you down the Royal Navy? I mean, yeah. Pretty much. <coughs> hmm, sorry. Should probably imbibe a bit of the water. I, uh, I'm just not, I don't feel like 6 is a good entry into the series. I don't feel like 5 is either. The only positive X6 is the soundtrack. Here's the thing. I might agree with you. I might not. Hard to say because the game is so bad, I have not had any time to focus on how good the soundtrack is. I spend too much time trying not to die. I mean, that's that's just me being 100% honest. I spend too much time trying not to die to even know if the music is that good. And that's sad. That's really sad. Yeah, it's it just... 
it's so difficult that it requires all your concentration so there's not enough brain left over to say, hey, this music's pretty good. I suck at the music when I'm not playing. I may have to do that. If the music is good enough, then then I may have to do that. If, you know, I wouldn't know if it's good enough because I can't I, I can't pay attention to it or I die. Looks like there is some weather in the area where we're landing, but we're coming in like between two waves of, of storms. <laughs> I'm, I'm very happy to hear that. Where's our alternate? Come on. What is this alternate? What are you calling this? A Manchester? A Luton? That's too far away. I don't know if they're going to call that Manchester or Liverpool, but I'd have to look it up. I just love staring at the ocean until Godzilla comes out and destroys my plane. I mean, we can't even really see the ocean at this point. The hell? Like we can't even really see the ocean. We're too we're too high up to even see the ocean. But we'll definitely be seeing something here in a few miles when the uh, coast of Great Britain starts to come in. We're just nowhere near it yet. However, we are about 20 nautical miles from top of descent, so it's going to ask me for destination data. I'm gonna grab our Tolis menu and we're gonna go and try and pull descent winds and it's gonna tell me no yep uh, we're gonna go to performance approach and it's gonna want to know that it's 1013 for the QNH temperature is going to be 15 the dew point of minus 10 uh, winds are going to be 001 at zero knots. And we'll give ourselves 400 for decision height. Bonk. And you can clear also. Why is Britain so great? My grandpa got mugged there once. You know... I don't know. You're talking to the wrong person. I'm a Yank. Um, I don't. I don't think there's anything really particularly great about Britain. Uh, it was once bigger than it is. I think that's that's the that's the best thing I can say for it. They were big and then they fell off. <laughs> so I'm gonna tell this thing to come down to like six thousand feet, probably. Um, when it's time to descend. I'm waiting to see if this star will show up and pull the descent wind. But it doesn't look like I'm going to get it. You're full-blooded American? I mean, I don't know how you would describe full-blooded American, but, I mean, yeah, my... My mom was born... My mom and dad were both born in the Kansas City area. So, um... My grandmother I think her parents were born in Poland uh, my grandpa my, my grandmother on my dad's side her parents were born in Poland I think um, on 
my grandpa was a I think one quarter Cherokee so he, he's got a significant history in the in North America um, on my dad's side I'm really not sure I think maybe Irish I was born in the USA and I live in the USA that's full-blooded American me okay so yeah um, I definitely qualify there um, but I mean I'll be honest I, I would say that I, I really don't care where somebody was born I think if somebody lives here and they they have kind of the same American values then they're American they're as American as I am because we're all immigrants here like you know white people did not were not born in America <laughs> Like, I as a person was, but like, if you trace back far enough, you'll either become Native American or you'll become European. And I, I mean, I look at me, we can tell I'm white, right? Um, I actually do have a 23 in me that I, that I did. Um, and I've got a significant amount of, I want to say Irish... Um, Polish, um, I've even got a bit of Sub-Saharan African, which is strange for me. <laughs> but yeah, basically, as long as somebody cares about their freedoms and stuff, that's fine. Yeah, eventually you go back far enough. We're all then we're all some generation of immigrant as Caucasians. We all eventually go back to Europe, right? So I think it's it it, it it's it's the creed that separates Americans from the rest of the world, right? Because everywhere else, you know, people started there. And those people are the ones still in power. People started here in America, but they're not the ones that are still in power. Right? Um, unfortunately, bad things, very, very bad things were done. And generally speaking, in most places, either the people who uh, started there defend it successfully, or the population dies out. It's very, very rare for two populations to coexist in a region, especially when one has been defeated. So, um, yeah, you live in the U.S., you, you, you believe American things, you're American. That's, that's how I feel. That is definitely how I feel. I don't care if you, you know, if, if your parents, oh no, Oh no. Well, my uh, earbuds just died. And that is very unfortunate. So I'm not sure what audio is going to do from now on. I may not be able to hear anything. <laughs> um, can't hear what's going on here. Um, okay. Yeah, you can be from Mars and still be American if, you know, if you, if, if you, if you try to integrate, if you integrate, if you become an American, like, that's, that's what it takes. That's being American. That's, that's it. We're, we're not a place We're we're a people, you know, like we're, we're not, you don't have to be born American. You just think American, that makes you American, right? That's that's what matters to me is 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 that because like and and that's the thing we have benefits here that that the rest of the world doesn't doesn't have right yeah look we're a melting pot right there's everybody here there's Native Americans there's Caucasians there's Africans there's Irish there's British there's Australian like we Chinese Japanese 
Korean, um, Taiwanese. Like, we've got everything here. And everyone has, uh, uh, literally every nation has, uh, has a significant population here. And that has been here for more than a generation or two, right? So there's not really any reason to ever make a distinction between you're an American and you're not, right? Like, there's no point. It's not a people. It's, it's a creed. It's, it's the way that we think. It's the things that we value that makes you American. Constraints are still on. Ooh, we're going down all the way to 2,500. Down to three. The only country that doesn't have a large population here is Atlantis. That's not necessarily true. I mean, it depends on... It depends on exactly where Atlantis is and what nations it was a part of. Or if it wasn't a part of a nation, um, did... That place doesn't even exist. That's not necessarily true. Um, it may have been a part of Pangea and been, been an island or even a continent that, uh, that collapsed and sank under the ocean. I've also heard some theories that, um, during the cooling, um, of the planet after the Big Bang, right, that after the formation of the solar system that uh, that there was a period of time where the oceans before they cooled had flash boiled so much that there was a layer of air trapped between um water that was that 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 was coming together in the skies condensing more than clouds and because this air was trapped inside and there was no way for it to break the surface tension that essentially there was a hydrosphere outside of the atmosphere i don't know if that's true it's just a uh, one one theory that i've heard before no, I'm not saying that that Pange that people were. Uh, I'm not saying that that humans from Pangea coming to America would be Americans, right? Would 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 then be Atlantean Americans. What I'm saying is that there was a part of Pangea that may have been Atlantis, and that once it broke apart, it could have sank at any point. It could have become unstable. It could, it, it, this, this hydrosphere theory that I've heard before years and years and years ago, um, when it collapsed, it, it, I've, obviously if it collapsed, because it obviously has by now, we've been out of our solar, out of our uh, atmosphere. So we know that there's no hydrosphere now, which means at some point, if it ever existed, it collapsed. And if it did so, then the oceans would obviously rise. Right? So there, it is possible, however unlikely, that there was a nation called Atlantis at some point, and that nation could have been swallowed by, you don't believe Atlantis ever existed, it makes no sense. Why does it make no sense? We still have islands uh, every day, I think. It might be every year. But we have islands that disappear and slip under the water every day. Um, it is not unusual. Uh, um, uh, Venice, Venice is sinking into the in, into the water. I mean, we're already talking about ice caps melting, and we're talking about a world that has gone through multiple ice ages, which means that the 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 water level on planet Earth has changed several times. I'm not necessarily saying that Atlantis did exist. I'm just saying it's not unreasonable to believe that it might have.
Not so much of a catastrophic sinking, though, not that quickly. Not necessarily, but what, how do you define sinking? That becomes the question. If you're talking about it from the perspective of somebody who's thousands of years old before there was a science, before there was really a difference between these things, they would have described sinking as the land is going underwater. Before the water was down there, now it's 100 feet above our heads, that's sinking. Right? Well, see, now, now you're bringing in more to it. Right? Now, now you're not talking about just a nation, but now you're talking about the mythos of that nation as well. Well, no, I understand that, it, that, that, that the legend is about it being destroyed quickly. Absolutely. Not even a question. Um, okay, we need to switch back. It is 1013 here as well. Um, but again, it depends on how a person of the time would describe what happened, right? So a person at the time is not going to know the difference between water level rising and the structure, the subsurface structure of the island breaking off of the continental shelf and the entire island sliding into the water. They're not going to know the difference. All they're going to know is, I'm on the land, but the land is now under the water, so we sank. Right? It all depends on the perspective from which it's being told. Now we have a difference between the island sinking or whether the, the, the water is rising. These are things that they didn't have any concept of back then. And I think I completely botched up by not hitting my chrono when I landed. And now my chrono is not running. There obviously might have been an island like Atlantis, a city with people on it, but I doubt that the Atlantis itself was ever real. I mean, if if you're talking about the mythology behind it and the having supernatural powers and things like that, do I think that actual supernatural powers beyond the realm of science? No, I don't believe that they had that. Uh, did they exist? I don't fucking know. Like, honestly, I don't know. Um... I think that it is absolutely plausible. I think it's plausible that they may have been more technologically advanced than other civilizations. And that if they were, then that, then I, I forget who it was. Um, I'm going to look it up. Oh, let's see, who was it? Uh, Arthur C. Clarke said, Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. So, <clears throat> uh, so yes, a, an island sinking is plausible. An island existing is plausible. A, a population existing on that island is plausible. A... A, a, a population that is at least sufficiently enough advanced above their the people they do business with to be dis, to have what they do described as magic is also plausible um sunk because of their greed no but but again you're you're asking the question of how is it going to be recorded um, and that's going to be our last Dream Raiders of the night, because um, we don't have that much longer to go. So I'm going to go ahead and close that down. Thank you so much for being a part of that today. All right, so we are descending. Landing elevation is set to auto. Big do arrivals is complete. Performance approach is complete. Top of descent wins. We already blew through that a long ass time ago. Um, Altitude is set, speed break half if required, and it is not this time because we were paying attention and we knew what we were doing, and we didn't descend way too quickly. 
Landing lights come on at 10,000 feet. We are just above 10,000 feet, so I'm going to go ahead and turn them on. I'm also going to turn on the seat belts. There's 13 people in the last one, and the first one only had one unit. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of how it works, right? It grows over time. The, the more people you have, the more people you get. And that's that's the same with anything about streaming or, or entertainment. Like, it's always the more you have, the better, the, the more you get. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and arm our landing system. So we are not that far off. We're going to be on the ground relatively quickly. Speed brake is not required, so I'm going to go ahead and arm our speed brakes. I'm going to set auto brake to low. The more I shoot myself in the foot, the more it hurts. I mean, true. That's the nature of shooting oneself in the foot. That's why I try not to do it. Um... I, I, I definitely screw up all the time. I, I do a lot of things where I shouldn't and I'm being dumb and I'm screwing myself over, you know, like I get sick and I take a, uh, I take a week off and then I take two weeks, three weeks, a month. And then I'm coming back after five weeks and I'm like, hey guys, I know I was supposed to be streaming, but I really have not felt up to it. I have had all kinds of problems. And I have to explain all that. It would have taken me five minutes beforehand to say, hey guys, this is going on with me right now. Um, who does it by accident? Oops, I shot myself in the foot again. I do it all the time. And not being able to force... I mean, literally shooting oneself in the foot. Actually, if I remember the statistics correctly, <laughs> shooting oneself in the foot almost always happens accidentally. So that's an interesting question to ask. Most of the time it has to do with holstering a weapon that is not properly safety. Um, but that's, that's one of the reasons why I'm a big advocate of if you are going to own a firearm, take safety courses, please. Make sure you know how to use the thing that you're getting. Um, I think it should be, it, it should be a legal requirement, a safety course. I am more interested in required safety courses than I am in background checks. And I definitely think that there should be background checks. Um... And registries and ballistic samples. But end of the day, right? Point is, the government doesn't have to tell you to take a damn safety course. It's that easy. I know that it costs some money, but deal with it. <laughs> Don't stress about not being able to stream. At least when you go onto a break, you have fair reason. When I go onto a break, it's like, I'm lazy, suck it up. I mean, it gets harder to say that once you're taking people's money, right? When people have subscriptions to you, it, it all kind of changes because then you're, in a way, you're on payroll. And then it really does not feel good to, uh, oh no. Oh, uh, are you guys not hearing any audio? You're not hearing any audio, are you? There it is. And you guys are hearing something. Nobody pays me, so I never care. Uh, yeah, and that's definitely the way it was when I was just a, a streamer and not an affiliate. But once you hit affiliate and you're taking people's money, it changes the ball game a little bit. I, I have to consider and, and think about, well, am I? Do, do, do I want that? Do, do I get to take a break right now? Um, so yeah, sometimes I get to the point where I can't make content and that sucks. And I try to just double down and be better about it as I move forward. Sometimes it happens and there's just nothing I can do. But I have told people from the start, I, I tell people every time that I stream, look, guys, if I can't give you an entertaining stream, a fun stream, if I can't stream well for you, I'm not going to stream. 
You feel me? Um, if I can't give you quality content, I'm not going to try. Because in the end, you being happy, you guys having a good time is what I'm here for. If I can't give you a good time, if I'm just going to bring the mood down, I'm not going to subject you to me. Right? Like, that doesn't make sense. Why would I do that? You know, at that point, I'm doing the best that I can by not streaming. Um, and I'll just try and make it up later and do the best that I can. It's, it's all I can do. All right, it looks like we're about to hit our D cell. In about five miles. Once we hit 230 knots, I'm going to hit my uh, flaps one. I apologize, by the way, if I if I look weird when I'm shifting and adjusting, it's because like my foot is still fucked up. It's not 100% yet. Um, it does some weird popping and it gets weak and it has twinges of pain. They're just not as bad. They're just, it's enough that I can stream. Um... But yeah, uh, being, being, I'm nervous once I get to affiliate if I ever get it while, while I can get ammo, uh, emotes and channel points, people can now pay me and then I have to start making content more frequently, which means no more useless hiatuses. It depends. And I'm going to say that with, with full honesty, it totally depends. Um, okay, ILS is tuned, approach mode armed, um, it does absolutely depend on what you're doing, on what you build your community on, and the expectation that you give people, uh, and especially if you give people a heads up and say, hey, uh, I'm gonna take a month or two off, then you're fine. If you can give people that, you're fine. Um, it's when you continue to take money from people and you don't tell them why you're not doing any work for it. That's that's when people get mad. All right, flaps one. Speed checked, flaps two. Drop gear. We're on a five mile final. Speed check. Flaps three. AP2 armed. Loke star. Wide slope is armed. Speed checked. Flaps full. Okay, we need to check the cabin. Ecam is all green. Flaps are full. Auto throttle is on. Nose wheel light can come on to taxi. Runway turnoffs is on. Landing lights are on. Ecam no blue. People who watch me uh, or have seen me stream have heard me say it at least once. Uh, I may have to take a break or I may get lazy. Don't worry if I don't do stuff for a while. Yeah, just when when you're getting paid, you have to remind people that it's okay if they need to stop paying. Like, if they need to cancel their subs for a while, you understand. Uh, as long as you're upfront about that, you'll probably be fine. You will have problems getting people back, though. Once people have stopped paying your sub... Once they have stopped subscribing to you, it is extremely unlikely that they come back. Um, unless they are a very strong part of your community. 
If they are strongly integrated into your community, then you'll probably be fine. They'll come back eventually when they can and when you're streaming more. But a lot of those won't leave in the first place, even if you do stop streaming for a while. Um, I had that for a while. Uh, I didn't stop streaming, but I had a very integral member of the community that um, was not able to make the streams for a while because her um, her schedule changed. Um, but she remained subscribed in part because of the pom-poms. She didn't want to lose the uh, emotes. And I think that's fair. Um, and that's part of the reason why I have them. Like, sometimes, sometimes that's all people want. Sometimes that's all they need is your emotes. Down, 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 down. All right. Minimum four hundred. Three hundred. Two hundred. One hundred. Nose up, reversers. Still reversers, full brakes. Manual braking, we're gonna need to back taxi. Actually, no, I think we do have a connection here on the right. Um, I come here quite a lot, so yeah, you can say I support this channel quite a bit. You do. And I appreciate that a lot. Um, like, I, I wish I could explain. I do appreciate that you come by and uh, everybody who spends any time here. I appreciate it a lot. Um, same way with the YouTube videos, right? This grass looks like PS1 grass. Yeah, this is a default. Uh, this is a default airport. It's a small one that nobody's ever taken any time to do anything with. And really, I mean, how good do you need the grass to be when most of the time you're at 38,000 feet, right? Okay, ground spoilers can be disarmed. Flaps fully retracted. APU master on. Terrain on ND is already off. I can turn off my weather. Weather radar. Probably check out the YouTube videos you missed. Yeah. Um, it's pretty much caught up with flights. With Mega Man, I think I'm still a couple videos ahead. Maybe, maybe five or six. I think I have them scheduled until mid-April. I want to say lap open start twenty one knots run a little fast and slow it down a bit and let's look for where we're gonna park here.
Oh, this is going to be miserable. There's no jetways. Let's go for stand four here. Turn this off. Warthog ten in the A ten Warthog. I mean, this place is small enough, that might be believable. Well, we're a couple feet too far. That's fine. Normally we would have a marshaller. Today we didn't. Alright. So. APU bleed on. Engine 1 and 2 master off. Runway turn off lights are already off. Nose wheel lights are off. Wing lights can come off. Bacon light can come off. Because we have no bacon. Nav and logo lights can come off. Uh, seat belts can come off. Elapsed time can stop. Why is that pom pom command not working? Did you do palms? Did you do palms? You haven't done palms. It's palms with an S. P O M S. There you go. Oh, you've got one of your own. Wait a minute. Oh, you did the unlock. Right. Sorry, the channel points thing. <laughs> I was like, hey, did you subscribe? I didn't get the notification you subscribed. Uh, all right, so AP bleed, engine one and two off, bacon light off, seat belts off, elapsed time stop, fuel pumps can come off, transponder can come off. Uh, McDo's can dim, I'm not going to worry about it. Brake fans can come off. Uh, park brake is on, adiers can come off, off, off. APU bleed can come off. APU master off. All exterior lights can come off. And then the emergency exit lights, the um, smoke, no smoking lights can come off. And the battery, one and two lights can come off. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Aberdeen. In the greatest of Britons, which is the only Britain, and that's the only reason why it's so damn great. So, that's where we landed. We took all the way down to there to stop. Uh, probably floated. Let, let's actually, we can look at replays, actually. Let's let's look at our replay. Uh, I'll go replay mode. Uh... Where you at, buddy? Uh, let's... Okay, so let's pan this forward. There we go. Okay. Turn it back just a little more. Just a little more. All right, let's watch ourselves come in. This is our final approach. Oh, yes, Scotland. Looks like a place in Great Britain. Yep, yep, it does. All right, so this was our approach. I know I was bobbing a little bit. You can see my flaps down, slats out. 
all changing the shape of the wing so that it provides um, a different lift profile. That's where we're landing. Congrats on not crashing. You know, that's not common in X-Plane. I only do that in uh, Shift 3 is the runway. Shift 3. I gotta remember that. So that's only really common in Microsoft Flight. I don't know why it just keeps wanting to turn off the auto throttle. Yeah, in Microsoft Flight Sim, it just it just wants to, to kill me every time. Every goddamn time. Where are we? Still ways out. Let's let's go ahead and run this forward a little quickly. You can see I'm getting off center. I'm getting off to the right. Well, my left. But I do correct it back to the left a bit. Before landing. I think I kind of dive at the at the runway here for a second. Yeah, I was a bit high. Yeah, see in there I floated. That was bad. I was about to touch down right where I'm supposed to. Too far left. That's where I started manual braking. But yeah, you can see how I was originally coming right at these. This is the mark I'm aiming for, is these two. I was almost on them, but then I floated too much. And you can see these reversers popped out. I'm still holding off that nose wheel. And only there does it make contact. It was actually a flight that had to do something like this. Um, because their nose wheel gear got stuck sideways. So they had to do that same kind of landing where they held the nose up for, for frickin' ever. Yeah, you can see that that little pop I do. I'm not supposed to do that. The flare is supposed to be a part of the landing, and it's supposed to just continue to glide me down. But I, I flared a little too soon. And it made me hop. Too much energy and too soon. But yeah, so that's... That's our... Uh, That's our replays, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it looks like our vertical speed was only uh, 31.89 feet per minute. So that's actually a really good landing. Um, I did float a bit, but hey, nothing wrong with that. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here and for spending your very valuable time watching this stream, watching us land, and having fun with the um with the replays and uh hopefully some of the flubs that i've made as we uh took off the first time hopefully it entertained you uh if anything i can be taken as a perfect example of what not to do so thank you guys so much for spending your time here we do this every friday i release these every friday uh, I also release Mega Man videos every Mega Monday at midnight, so they are there as soon as you're available as uh, uh, to make your, your Monday better, to make your Friday better. Um, and if you want to see this stuff happening live, I do flights every Tuesday, and I do Mega Man every Wednesday and Friday live on my Twitch channel. You'll find that linked in the description down below. 
Uh, this has been a stream in X-Plane 11.51. You can find the link to Laminar Studios and their development of X-Plane down at the bottom. Um, I'm flying the Tolis A319. That'll also be linked in the description. This is all default scenery, so you won't see that this time, but normally I will. Um, we did two flights today. Now, this will be released as two separate flights on YouTube. So hopefully um, you guys are okay with that and uh, don't miss anything. Thank you and have a wonderful evening.